CataractCoach.com. If the caps or bag shallows during cortex removal, then you may have this problem. Let's go right to the cortex removal. Eye probe being placed inside the eye. The case has been uneventful so far. Little nuclear chip that's going to be pushed down the port. And watch what happens now as we start to remove the cortex. So we're moving the cortex. And as we're doing this, we note that the capsule bag is very shallow. The space between the anterior capsule rim and the posterior capsule is very small, only about one, maybe one and a half millimeters. It seems very tiny. And as we try to remove and strip the cortex here, it becomes very difficult because the capsule bag is not being pushed back. So what's the issue? Well, we have a sufficiently high infusion pressure. In fact, we raised it. That would be your bottle height or your um, forced infusion. So we've raised the infusion pressure. It's still shallow. Now, nothing else is going on in the posterior segment. It's just difficult to remove this. And the reason is there's fluid in the anterior hyaloid space. This is a case with very loose zonules, prior trauma. And our infusion, BSS fluid, has gone through that area of zonular absence or weakness and into the anterior hyaloid space. So here we'll use a bimanual approach now just to facilitate removal of the rest of the cortex. So in a case like this, there is that potential passageway between the anterior segment of the eye and the posterior segment. And what's happening is this fluid from the infusion is going around the area, around the capsular bag equator, or towards the area of zonular weakness or absence, and ending up in the anterior hyaloid space. And that's causing this shallowing of the capsular bag. So we have to be very cognizant of that. So we've now removed the cortex. Let's start filling up the capsular bag with our cohesive viscoelastic. So injecting that inside the eye. And we can come out now with the IA probe and continue to fill that up. We don't want to let the anterior chamber collapse because that would result in a very low pressure and that may allow vitreous to prolapse through that area of weak or absent zonules. We definitely want to avoid that. So here's filling up the capsular bag. You can guess what's next, and that is, of course, a capsular tension ring. So we're going to place this capsular tension ring in the eye. And we'll dial that right in, and it'll go all the way around. You can see it's progressing nicely. Here's the very end of it. And we can drop that coat totally in the capsule bag. Now, we can use the chopper, and we can center up that rexus a little bit. And you can see that this is a nice round rexus of about 5.5 millimeters. And things are looking a lot more stable with that capsule tension ring in place. So now we can place the eye well in the eye. In this case, it's going to be a single piece acrylic lens, which will be placed in the capsule bag. If you are going to pay, place a three piece lens, you have a, two options. One is place it completely within the capsule bag. And the second option is you could place it in the sulcus with the haptics and the sulcus and the optic captured through the capsule rexus. And in that case, I encourage you to keep the haptics 90 degrees away from the area of zonular loss. So there's the eye well, it goes in the capsule bag nicely. That looks great. And now we can remove our viscoelastic. Now we have to be careful here. We don't want to draw up any vitreous through that area of weak zonules. So going inside here, let's remove our viscoelastic. And you can see how the eye well um, was shaking back and forth to get out the cohesive viscoelastic from behind it. So now we've cleared that away quite nicely. So it's important in these types of cases, when you notice that shallowing of the capsular bag during cortex removal, most commonly it's because of fluid in the anterior hyaloid space. And that can be like this case where the fluid's going around the capsular bag equator through area of zonular loss or weakness. Or it can be from a break in the capsule. You can have a break at the equator or even in the posterior capsule. And as fluid goes through that, it accumulates in that anterior hyaloid space. So here we'll seal up the incisions. That looks great. And you see the rexus has a nice overlap. And at the end, we're going to put here preservative-free triamcinolone in the eye. Serves a few functions. One, it's going to stain any prolapsed vitreous, if there is any. And luckily, there is none. 
It'll also help control inflammation and hopefully help minimize the risk of anterior capsular phimosis in the post-op period. So we'll seal up the incisions and then check everything and that looks great. And that was a nice case. But before you go, let's go back, rewind. This is the beginning of the case that we didn't show you. So I want you to watch this and now you know there's going to be zonular weakness or loss. And here's how we notice it. So again, beginning of the case, we're going to make our incision here. There's that diamond. Nice, clean incision there, making very sure to have good architecture there. Took your time. Now, using our caps rexus forceps, this is where you're going to note it's very difficult to puncture the anterior capsule rim. And look how the entire lens moves a little bit. This is a patient with a very loose zonular support system. As a result, the anterior capsule is not taut. It should be nice and taut, like the head of a drum. Very well supported, very easy to puncture and make the rexus. But instead, it's very loose. And as we saw, it was difficult to puncture it and difficult to tear the rexus. We keep trying and we keep advancing it. We are making a nice round caps rexus, but there's not a sufficient amount of counter traction to make this easy. As a result, we have to do many more grabs and be a lot more deliberate in what we're doing here. So now we know for sure these zones are going to be bad. So we made a nice, good, generous five and a half millimeter caps rexus. And my advice in these cases is get the nucleus out of the capsular bag. There's just not good support. So hydro dissection being carried out, and our goal is to prolapse that nucleus out of the capsular bag. And remember, we have a nice large capsular rexus, so this is feasible. There is the equator of the lens nucleus that's brought up, and you can see the lens density here. That looks great. Now let's recoat the corneal endothelium with our viscoelastic. And then this nucleus can be chopped up with the phaco probe and the chopper and then emulsified quite nicely. And it'll be very uneventful. And phaco probe going in the eye here, buzz in. And once you have the first chop, like we show you right here, there it is coming around, bang. We can separate the two halves and continue the chopping motion to remove the whole nucleus. So thanks for watching. I trust that you gathered some very important learning from this very interesting case.